It's important when you talk about dyslexia to understand first that the human brain was never born to read. We were born to, to think, to walk, to smell, to hear, to talk, but never to read. So when the brain had to learn a new circuit, that was something that advantages some people, but disadvantages children and adults who have a different brain organization. So dyslexia is not a failure, it is a different organization of the brain that um, allows that person to have very important skills for our species. So we want to look at dyslexia in the long term of when we learn to read as a species and even before, what were the brains necessary for our species to survive. That brain of an individual with dyslexia was here well before the species invented reading. That brain is necessary because for our species to survive, we need different forms of brains. This is called neuro or cerebral diversity. So dyslexia is a different organization of the brain that is excellent for some things, but disadvantaged for the processes that put together oral language, vision, and cognition. So what we have in dyslexia is an inability to learn in a, an easy way, not an inability to learn, but an inability to learn how to read and to spell and even to write for some children and individuals, even learning to write is somewhat difficult. I want everyone to understand this has nothing to do with intelligence. This has to do with different forms of intelligence getting connected in the brain. So that person who is, a, let's say, a five or six or seven year old, a teacher looks at them and might think, oh my gosh, they are less intelligent because they can't learn to read. That child might even be gifted. The reality is the brain's organization is disadvantaged for putting the connections of the reading circuit together quickly. What is beautiful about the reading brain is it can create new circuits for new cognitive processes. So in the case of literacy and numeracy, it had to connect parts that had not been connected before. So a reading circuit is when the brain's typically developing networks for language processes, for hearing processes, for visual processes, have to be connected in a way that allows a visual symbol and a linguistic term and its meaning to all come together at once. Typical reader is that they learn to do that not naturally, there's nothing natural. There's nothing natural about reading, but they learn to do that with relative ease. A dyslexic brain takes a slower time to, in fact, bring the visual information from one hemisphere over to the left hemisphere and make those early connections. The dyslexic brain, for many, not all, is using their right hemisphere more dominantly to do what typical readers do in this other hemisphere. But the amazing part of the reading circuit is that it develops more and more complexity over time. So you have in the beginning a, a small understanding of what words mean, but as the system becomes faster and faster, the connections between vision and language are like this, and that allows the brain to think ever more complexly, add ever more complex information. So it begins to add what the child knows about that word. And the more the child knows, the more the brain, the circuit becomes ever more complicated, 
ever more elaborated. And the more the language system and the cognitive system are developing, the circuit develops with it. So there's this amazing reciprocal relationship between what we know and what we read. They are all coming together. So the more you read, the more you know. The more you know, the more you read. And so for teachers and parents, they should always know, keep the knowledge going because eventually it will come together in that circuit. Mm -hmm.